Hello, welcome to this video all about the Smartboard GX version 2. In here we're going to look at annotations anywhere within your desktop, whether that's PowerPoint, PDF, actually inking inside those documents for multiple users. And then we'll have a look at Smart Notebook and that true, true teaching and learning piece of software and available for free on your Windows or your Mac machine. And then we're going to click the home button, which is over here. I'm going to jump into my, my Android unit directly from the panel and look at the great stuff here that really does support your teaching and the learning within your setting. So, starting with a connected PC here. I've got it connected around the back to the Smartboard GX version 2 here. Um, I've got mine connected with my USB-C wire. You could use a VGA, you could use a HDMI, or you could use a display port. All of those are around the back itself there. As well as you having quick access to those ports straight at the front here, again, your USB-C um, and your HDMI connections if you are wanting to have guest access within those itself. But let's have a look at actually being used within the classroom. So if you want to bring up any of your content just within your usual Microsoft environment, I've got that here, and then fantastic touch that I can move there as well. I can move that around, and I've got 20 points of touch, so I can have lots of people using it here as well. And if I do want to add any annotations to that, I can just use Smart Ink. So let's grab those tools here. So I've got a couple of tools here, the floating toolbar, so I can move those around wherever I need them, and then I just pick up the pen and just start annotating anywhere in there. And of course, it knows automatically that a pen is a pen, your finger's a finger, and I can do those simultaneously at the same time as well. If I've got multiple learners, they can come up and do that whilst one moves around and one rubs out itself there. Really nice and handy if you just want to show where a file is, but I've got it actually inside that document there. Maybe I'm using PowerPoint, and I'm actually within that PowerPoint itself, let's just go to go full screen, I can actually point out some of these features up on the GX and those ports that we looked at earlier and add notes within that. I can skip forward to the next page and actually discuss student engagement or any other bits and pieces within this here that is part of my lesson. And then as I continue to do it, you can see actually those inking is actually on each of those pages and it stays within that PowerPoint. So that when I exit that page itself here, all those annotations are right within that document, not an acetate over the top. They're saved automatically within your PowerPoint, enabling you to have your auto saved on and just continue your workflow. Or you might want to save two documents um, so you're not having the annotations saved. Again, your choice around how you do that itself. Whilst we're on there, just a couple of points there. That's 20 points of touch that I mentioned, and that's on a Windows and a connected Mac as well. And that's that great smart ink there. You've got your speakers at the front there um, that are forward facing at the front there. And of course, we'll come on to our moment. We'll have a look at that Android unit, the Android 11 unit as well. And you can see that it's a very crisp, crisp 4K Ultra HD screen as well. So let's minimize PowerPoint itself. We've looked at PowerPoint. We've looked at annotation and anything there as well. Even if I'm just bringing up a web browser itself, I can actually annotate on that page. And then if I go onto the next page as well, you can see that I can actually annotate on those. And my annotations are staying in the tab. Or if I'm just going back to that file manager as well, my annotations are staying there. Giving me that freedom, that flexibility to do and open all those different applications that I need during that lesson and the annotations, the inking staying there to continue that flow um, of learning within my lesson. Another application you might choose to use on your Windows or Mac machine is Smart Notebook. Smart Notebook is a free download available from smarttech.com. And from there, it gives you a really enriched, powerful learning tool that you can use within the classroom. Ones that I can just move objects around with my fingers. I can pinch to zoom them, move that over there. And then I can add any of these annotations at the side here. If I choose to change the color, I can do that straight from there as one child. And then maybe another child wants to write in purple, so they can be doing that over here at the same time as that student over there doing theirs. If they want to rub out, if they want to carry an inking, all of that is possible at the same time. I'll just go back to my pointer here. It might be the child wants to move something whilst inking. They might want to choose to rub something else whilst continuing to an annotate on those there. All of those points make it for a real true multi-user experience, that not one is having to wait for another, actually, if you wanted 20 students all coming to annotate all at the same time, because of the 20 points of touch within the Smartboard GX version 2, you can do that. 
and the software supports the teaching and learning and then the children can access that rather than having to learn something rather than having to stop something they can continue their own learning in that sense there and of course there's loads of tools within here there's a great gallery with pages um line paper squared paper and you can obviously customize that yourself and again you can customize all the bits and pieces as well as some great maths tools like a ruler protractor all built into that smart notebook itself on there so annotate anywhere fingers a finger pens a pen palm to raise anywhere across that connected windows or mac machine and then for multi-users can do that all at once as well so just coming over here, I'm just going to look at a few buttons on this side as well. So I've got your volume buttons. I've got your pause button directly from there. Freeze it and unfreeze it. I've got an off button and I've also got a home button. So let's click that home button now. Now you can see this looks very different. This is the Android unit built directly into the SmartBoard GX version 2. So there's no longer a need to connect any other device. No Windows, no Mac not a Chromebook built in, although it's a bit like a Chromebook because it is an Android unit. So I have got various different apps within here. And of course, I've got more apps within there. And if you want to add any more apps as well, it comes with some art remote management. So those can be deployed correctly, um, complying with Google's terms and conditions as well. So let's just have a quick look at a few of these. As we've just finished looking at Smart Notebook, I'm going to start with the whiteboard here. So within the whiteboard, I can either have it popping up as a full screen or kind of a smaller window here. I've just got a smaller window, so I'm just gonna maximize that. And then I've got a large whiteboard for me then to come up and actually annotate on and continue that lesson or, or start the lesson within bits and pieces in here. And of course, there's lots of tools down the bottom. You've got different pens within there as well. So I can have a normal pen. It might be that a slightly smaller one like that. So let's just make it slightly larger so we can see. There we go, more of a calligraphic style more of a paintbrush style. Again, just trying to get a bit more flexibility. And of course, there's an auto draw as well, which really helps with me with my drawing. If I'm trying to kind of draw a dog or something. And then actually, that's the sort of dog that I was aiming for. So really helps me in that lesson as well. And I'm just going to go back to select and I can select that tool and move the dog wherever I need to within that as well. I've got some Great measurement tools here, your protractor ruler and set squares in there. I can add in different shapes to it, whether that's 2D, whether that's 3D shapes. Um, and let's just actually put one of those in here and then select it on there. I can change the color of it so we can see it a bit better. And then I've got those shapes straight from within that. Um, I can have a pair mode. So if I've got multiple learners and wanting rather than just on one big canvas, I can actually split that canvas up into four parts. So then they've got four different, their own canvases on here. So if I'm writing on this one, this is then my area within it itself. Or maybe this one's in yellow, this one's in black. I've got that multi-user within that whiteboard itself there. Or of course, coming on, I can add in tables within here. I can add in my maps. And if I'm writing actually in this mind map here, you can say that it then snaps actually into that part. And then I can add, I can take away and really kind of begin to put my thoughts within that as well. Or sticky notes can be typed in. Or a handwriting grid on here. Um, it's, well, then it'll then recognize that and actually snap it to the handwriting as well within here. Um, all of those are kind of straight within that whiteboard itself. But obviously I'm working from a white background at the moment. So let's just click on the menu at the side here. And then you can see here that I can just change the theme as well. So maybe I wanted that squared paper around the background or a musical stave. Maybe I wanted to change the background color to something else as well. Or I can actually add in my own image from the storage room of the board or from my cloud storage. And obviously from your cloud storage, I can actually go straight to my OneDrive, my Google Drive, or whatever it might be, and access those straight from within there. Adding that content straight to your whiteboard to really support that workflow. Obviously, if you've added to it, if I just cancel those, once I've actually got that lesson itself here, I might want to save it, I want to import it, or actually export it. So if I actually wanted to bring in any other content, you can see I've got those different options there. If I want to save this option here, again, I can save it directly to that Android unit on the board or save it directly to 
my OneDrive, Google Drive, or any other online storage itself, any other cloud storage there. So great, quick and easy access to all of those within that itself there, or just obviously adding up a new one or open one that's already in the board or already on your drive itself. So I'm now just going to click on this side menu here, and you can see a little bar appears. So I'm going to click Home, and that was really focusing on that whiteboard itself there. And then let's just briefly go through some of these other apps itself here. Um, I'm going to actually open up this palette one next, because just because it's very similar to the whiteboard that we've looked at. And I'm going to use this just in the smaller mode here. Let's use a slightly larger pen. Just gives me a bit of a preview. Let's just pick a different color. And then I can see that I've got here the choice of lots of different pens if for, or pens or uh, different palettes there, different ways of ad accessing that digital art within there. Let's just change the middle color one so I can see that difference of that one there as well. Um, and I can even mix them within the palette and have those in that palette app there itself as well. So I'm just going to minimize that. And then that takes that away there. I've also got screen share. Now, screen share is a great way to actually share student devices to the board here. I can have up to uh, nine devices connected, either through an app or natively. Maybe we need to have picture in picture. I can have multiples up on here. I'm really sharing their content straight up onto the board here. Great for a visualizer through that camera on it or reading large text. So I can actually read that text here, have it displayed on there. Or of course, if you've just taken lots of pictures and you want to kind of look through those and actually share those with the class, it's a great way of adding any of that content straight from that screen share itself. So let's just have a look at the browser itself. Now within the browser, again, I'm just gonna toggle it maybe sideways or I'm actually gonna go full screen in this. And you can see then I have got my browser within there. I can look, I look at that content. It might be that I'm then going to my OneDrive and access anything from OneDrive. It might be that I'm going to Google Drive, Google Classroom, and any of the other things within the suite there, you can access that. Or it might just be playing some of these online games here. For example, Top Marks, I can play, hit the button straight from this. Again, this is using that Android connected device. Nothing to do with your laptop, nothing to do with your Chromebook or your Mac. It's directly from the board here. So the students can then come up, they can use these, and then actually can play that content directly on the board. And again, like 10 town here. So I can use that and actually manipulate those and actually draw inside that app itself there. So I'm just gonna scroll down from the very top, which reveals that menu there. And then I'm just gonna close the browser within that itself there. So let's look at some of these more apps. So within here, you can see I've got files and cloud drive. So actually looking at my files here, I can see these are my, I can jump straight to my drive here. I can go here and then I can see all the ones accessible straight from within my Google Drive there in my Files app. I can go to my Cloud Drive and here you can see that I've signed into these accounts. So I can say that my default one is going to be my Microsoft one. So it will automatically save all those files straight to that one there or of course my OneDrive or my Google Drive there. And if I want to click on that drop down arrow there, I can change the default and I can sign out as well, really nice and handy so that when you are leaving that classroom, you know that you're no longer there, um, you're no longer signed into any of those apps itself there. And of course, you've got various different bits and pieces within that itself as well. Great way to quickly clean up the board um, and get rid of any other bits and pieces that you want to um, remove before moving on as well. So we had a look at that settings bar at the side here, which is toggled over here. It's actually also over the side here, so I can toggle that one. And then within there, you can see that I've opened open my, my task view. So all the recent apps that I've opened will be listed up on here. I can click an overlay. So over the top of any of those apps, I can, if I wish to, have an overlay of that inking there to actually write over the top of them within that itself. Let's look at the menu from this side. You can see that it is the same. Um, there's the overlay there. I've got screen capture, so I can quickly open up that. I can capture any of those tools there. Um, maybe if in, I'm in a web browser and I want to select, actually take a picture of that, change the height of it itself here, and now I can insert that directly into my whiteboard, and I've got that picture up on there as well. So a great way to actually multitask and kind of smash those apps together where I've got one and then bring it actually into that useful whiteboard itself there. Um, and I've got a timer in there as well. I've got access to other bits and pieces there. A great way to screen record it as well, so I can actually record what is actually on the screen. 
and I've set my timer so it disappears after a few seconds. I can lock the screen directly from there, calculator, um, and last one I'm just gonna click on there is a spotlight, so it gives, gives me that spotlight up in there as well. And then I can go into my settings, I can change the size of it, I can change the opaque of it, so it's actually just looking at that key information directly from anywhere in that Android unit itself there. There is an extra menu at the bottom here as well. If I do want to change my brightness, I want to change my volume straight from that as well. Um, and then just there are a few more settings within that board as well. So if I just go home, and then just very briefly, before we jump back into our connected PC, look at these ones here. So this is where you can begin to set it all up, whether that's Wi-Fi, whether that's Ethernet um, connections within there. I can begin to personalize my board here. I've got this multi-window here, so they're kind of smaller ones. I can look at my imp inputs within here as well. A few to really kind of point out here that wake on active source. So I have a ham, if I am connecting my PC, as soon as I plug it in there, the board itself is going to wake up itself straight from in there as well. And then jumping down to the system here, you can see I can set the password within that. I can look at my storage. I can actually expand the storage by plugging in a memory stick around the back or an external drive within there. And then just finally, just saying here that it is Android 11 within that itself. There's other things in the settings as well, which we can go into detail, like turning it off at certain times during the day um, or at evenings, it automatically turns off at six o'clock or eight o'clock on Wednesday because it's the governor's, whatever it might be. I can have that directly from the board there. So let's just change the input. So I'm gonna pop it from the bottom here. And you can see there's a little green dot here just so it shows which one's connected. And I'm gonna jump into my USB-C and from here. And I'm now back into my connected PC from around the back. So I'm just gonna reset this page here. So click on edit and then reset page and then it'll be back to where we were in the beginning there as well. So that was SmartBoard GX V2 in there. A great way where you can plug in your computer, add the annotations anywhere just by picking up that pen and writing on top of it, whether it was a PowerPoint, whether it was a um, web browser, whether it was any application itself, or even one thing I didn't see is looking at actually inside a PDF and then I'm actually inking inside that PDF itself there. Um, and then obviously I can save that with the annotations as well, straight from there. Annotations, pick up the pen, write in it. Want to move something, move with my finger. A really natural collaborative way to have a proper, unique, multi-user experience on your Windows, on your Mac devices. Or if you choose not to plug in any of those devices, you've got that really powerful Android unit built into the built into the GX version 2 as well, where you can have those whiteboards. You can use those great features within it itself there. You can share your screen directly to it. You can access any of your content, save it directly into your cloud, bring it out of your cloud really nice and easily straight from the Android unit itself. And of course, that professional development that comes with Smart as well. There is loads of professional development, whether that's webinars, whether that's self-surf guides, um, or of course, actually bespoke training package, professional development packages that can be run alongside yourselves and actually really support that implementation on that long-term approach as well. So I'll leave some comments, I'll leave some links in the chats below. Um, feel free to click on any of those links as well. Um, please be in touch, I'll leave an email address. Of course, be in touch with your local reseller and they can um, arrange a full demo and actually see this being used within your setting as well. So thank you very much for your time. Take care.